Hi there, I'm Rhythm Man. I've done a couple of videos on the Steam controller, but today I want to talk about the PlayStation 4 controller. So why the PlayStation 4 controller, or the DualShock 4 controllers? Well, the DualShock controllers has a lot of properties in common with the Steam controller, like gyroscope, adjustable lights, the ability to give it a unique name, and the touchpads. It also has other features, like having two very comfortable and accurate analog sticks, an excellent form, triggers that are really good, and easy button placement. However, it does lack two separate trackpads, grip buttons, and dual stage triggers, but we'll talk about that more later. First, let's talk about how to get started. Plug your controller into the computer via USB. Go to controller settings and locate the controller. Customize it with, a, with its own name, and you can also give it its own color on the lights. Optionally, if you have a Steam Link, you can connect it to the Steam Link using Bluetooth for wireless gaming on the couch. So let's talk about the configurations. A lot of the configurations are similar to the Steam controller. So if you're familiar already, or if you've seen my other videos, this part is gonna be pretty easy. First, the joysticks can be assigned to either left or right joystick output or mouse output. You can use mouse output for shooters that don't support controllers. You can also assign the joystick click to any key or any ability. Triggers can be kept as trigger output, or you can assign it to any key or action. You can simulate the Steam Controller's dual stage triggers by assigning soft pull and full pull to two different actions, but there is no click or tactile feedback like on a Steam Controller, so it's a little easier to accidentally do a full pull when you meant to do a soft pull. The trackpad can be assigned to the mouse, to the analog sticks, to the face buttons, or to the digital pads. You can also have the option of partitioning the trackpads in half. Doing so treats the left and the right half of the trackpad as separate. So you could say control player movement using one side and activate abilities with the other. However, considering how out of reach the trackpad is, I don't think you'll be doing that anytime soon. You can assign a function to the gyroscope. You can assign it to mouse for improved FPS aiming or assign it to tilt so you can assign keystrokes to the tip. You can also assign the gyroscope to analog, like uh, one of the joysticks, which is useful if you're playing a driving video game. Using the Steam controllers gives you, well, sorry, the Steam configurations, that is, <laughs> gives you the access to modes and activators. So you can choose what happens when you long press, double press, or press a combination of buttons, or combine all of these together and add delays to your output to make interesting configurations. Basically, your imagination is the limit. My opinion of the PlayStation controller with the Steam configuration is kind of like my opinion about everything. You know, there's pros and there's cons. On the plus side, this controller is more familiar than the Steam controller, and many gamers may already have one lying around. The ergonomics are a little better, in my opinion, and objectively speaking, there are actually more options with this controller. I mean, you have two joysticks instead of one and virtually two drag pads. So I can see a lot of gamers having fun with this. But compared to the Steam controller, it's not built from the ground up for PC gamers who thrive on keyboard and mouse gaming. The exclusion of grip buttons can be a deal breaker if your game requires being able to bind a large number of buttons to different keys. There's no easy way to activate gyroscope outside of leaving it on all the time, which is less than ideal. Compared to the Steam controller, you can activate it just by putting your thumb on a trackpad and deactivate it by raising it off the thumb pad. And I know it's a small thing, but I kind of like the dual stage triggers on the Steam controller. Even though you can emulate them on the DualShock controller, it's not quite the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong. The DualShock 4 is probably the most powerful controller you can buy with your money right now. 
but I truly believe the Steam controller is more capable when it comes to shooters and keyboard and mouse heavy games. Still, the DualShock controller is an easy win for driving and platforming, or games optimized for Game Pass. I have been using it for the past week or so and personally, I feel that the added comfort and familiarity is probably worth the slight downgrade in keyboard and mouse gaming thanks to the customization options available through Steam. Especially if you're on a couch playing using a Steam Link and not really playing competitively. However, my Steam controller is still there waiting for me when it's time to play Overwatch. Anyway, I hope this video was informative. Look out for a series of short videos going over the controller in more details. And check out my channel if you want to watch more Steam controller videos. You can also check out Warframe videos as well. I have a couple of those put up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah.